Hi, anybody watching this? Um, I have not updated my journey in um, several weeks, probably a month or two. Um, so I just wanted to check in. I want to document everything. So uh, good and bad. And I just want to keep to help myself stay accountable and, you know, even for myself to look back on, to see like what I was struggling with what, um, you know, if I've had any successes and that sort of thing, all of that. So, um, I, um, I, I have been trying to do carnivore for several months since about, um, since August, like, well, the end of July, it is now the beginning of October, um, September about two months and I um, I, I stopped counting the days because I've, I've had too many slip-ups and uh, um, just days <clears throat> days of not just not following it very well that that I don't really think I consider can consider myself being carnivore for so many days and I'm just, I'm really just trying to, to figure out how, how to incorporate this lifestyle into my life. Um, I, I feel that it is, um, a healing, good, uh, lifestyle that I w truly wish I could fully embrace, uh, without complication. <laughs> and it, you know, it, Obviously, it's possible there are other people doing it all over the world. As I've said before, uh, I am a elementary music teacher, which is a super fun job. Um, also, extremely challenging, extremely exhausting, mentally and emotionally uh, taxing completely. Um, so, while it's rewarding and and fun most of the time. There are also some significant challenges. I work at a Title I school um, with children, a lot of whom are from kind of your normal, typical home, but a lot of them are from very difficult home lives. Um, a lot of them have dealt with some severe trauma in their lives already. Uh, my school is kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, and, uh, you know, our school is striving to become a trauma-informed school, trauma-informed classrooms, if you know what that is. Um, but it, um, essentially because we teach kids who, many kids who have dealt with a significant trauma in their life. And there's also a thing called secondhand trauma when you are, uh, caring for or working with someone who has um, been affected by trauma, it indirectly can traumatize you um, because their behavior is reflected is a reflection of the trauma that was that was put on them, and um, and also just you know, the, the knowledge of and seeing the pain and the struggle in other people who have been affected by trauma also, um, especially for empathetic people, you know, creates a certain amount of indirect or secondhand trauma. Um, anyway, um, that being said, uh, in, in my, in my job and in my family who has also been affected by trauma uh it it has it's it's proven for me personally to um have a difficult time trying to stay on a rigid food plan um healing and simple though it may be the food plan itself, um, 
I have just not been able to truly um, completely go cold turkey, completely go carnivore. Um, this last week, I, try, I tried to do a um, like a sardine fast, uh, just to try to recover and, and catch up on some healing. Um, <laughs> and I feel like sometimes I feel like, uh, the devil is against me, honestly, like instantly bringing temptation to me when I'm trying to do something good. And, um, which could, is it? complete possibility but you know like the first day someone brought cupcakes like directly to uh to well I'm in a choir so it's to the Sopranos uh and they were amazing and that cupcake honestly I was like you know what I'm not gonna I'm not going to be mad at myself about this. Like this, this is kind of worth it. Um, this was very delicious. But then the next day, a student was passing out cupcakes for her birthday, which was just a store-bought cupcake. And that one, even though I ate it, was not really worth it. And, and then the next day I went to dinner with my family and ended up eating dinner rolls. Um, which maybe were kind of worth it, but I don't think I needed to eat four of them. Um, so, I mean, I clearly have a significant addiction and this is the way with food, with carbs. And, um, honestly, I'm struggling to like, how, how do I do this? How do how do I do this lifestyle? Because if I go completely off all things, always, all, all things carb, always, never, ever again, there's something inside of me that, that resists that completely, that, and it could just be my addiction, but there's something that like, mm, I can't, I can't say, I can't say never again. I can't say forever. Um, because it triggers in me like this desperation, this desperate response that <laughs> ultimately then results in my binging. Um, okay, well, if I'm never going to do it again, then I better binge all the foods right now. Um, which turns into like a week long binge because you can possibly binge everything you like or like enjoyed or had a significant tie to or memory of in even a week um and just say goodbye to it forever so that that kind of sense of loss sense of mourning sense of gravity like i i'm either gonna have to come to terms with that and completely accept that and accept the grieving process in that um I've lost my father and I've grieved my father. He's not coming back to me and I can talk to him and um, I can think about him and I can see pictures of him, but he's, you know, he's never gonna come back. And so if I, if I can somehow turn my mindset the same way to food of saying, you know, I, yeah, I loved pie. This and it sounds ridiculous as I'm saying it, but I loved pie. And, um, we had some great memories together and it was a significant part of my relationships with my family. Um, going back to my grandparents who are both dead, but you know, my, my grandpa, my grandfather's pie crust is famous and has been passed down to, to my mother and then to me, um, and so, you know, I can, you know, and like, I'm kind of now the only one in the family who can make this, 
this pie crust. Um, and pizza bread, another thing. It's foods, different foods, but like the three big ones are pizza bread and pie crust and lasagna that have been passed down through my family as our, as this traditional food that has somehow landed on me that I, um, that I am really good at making them and no one else is um, really even attempting it anymore, but they really love it when I make it and like ask for it. Um, so the, I, like those kinds of things that are like a part of our family culture and part of our, um, yeah, just, just our community as a whole. And so I like the, the thought of giving those things up forever like the word forever, like I, mm, like I, like my mind can't do it. It won't do it. it um, so I mean, I'm either going to have to get there to that point where my, my, my mind and heart can accept that, that I, that that is not going to be part of my life moving forward. It's a different phase in my life. And that at age 48, I'm going to have to build something different, maybe create new foods that are actually healing and helpful, carnivore foods, um, that I can move forward with, that other people would enjoy, that could be part of our new tradition. But that's a really hard thing. That's, that's really hard. And I, like, I don't know if I can do that. Um, I'm certainly not at the point yet that I can or that I, I can even broach the subject with my family um, of never making pizza bread again, of never, you know, never making an apple pie again um, in the way that, um, yeah, I mean, apples, you wouldn't make an apple hot pie or carnivore anyway I, I mean these things may seem to some people little things or insignificant things or you know not worth it um not worth the, the pain because like literally it's it's painful um i i was i was on on carnivore and just well i would say ketovore i was doing okay sticking to it slips like maybe once a week and then this last week was several slips in a row to the point where then I, the, the following day, so it's cupcake one day, cupcake the next day, dinner rolls the next day. Oh, and then the following day was just like, hmm, I don't, I don't want to count anymore. I'm like almost to the point of giving up. Um, probably because at this point, after the previous incidents, the cravings start to get a stronger hold and the stress of life, of work, <laughs> excuse me, um, you know, the, the, the thing in your mind that clicks and says, you need a treat, you need a snack. Boy, that would really, that would really help. Um, of course it doesn't, but you know, when you're in that, you can't stop thinking about it. And you know, children leaving snacks in my room that are not even that great, but did I eat it? Yeah, I did. I'm not really proud of that, but like, this is the point, like as, as these things come and gain control, there you are. And you, I, just fall right into the temptation. Um, and now I'm um, sitting here a few hours before my niece's birthday party weekend, um, which we're going to a fall festival tomorrow, going camping, and um, a fall festival of my hometown that is you know, a big deal that I go to every year, um, it's apples and apple pie and 
all the things that any festival would be, or, you know, um, all the booths and things, you know, and sitting here telling you right now, I'm not planning on trying to completely avoid cars, but I'm also just kind of thinking, but I know that every single carb that I eat is going to contribute to the inflammation, which makes it harder to walk, walk around to this festival and all of the things that are happening this weekend. Um, so how, you know, it makes sense to be clean so that I can have the fun. But then also part of the fun is the food. And so it's like, well, you know, at what point am I going to get to, like right now I'm just like, suck it up. I guess I'll deal with the pain. So like, maybe I just have to hit a, a, a lower bottom, a lower rock bottom that I haven't truly hit yet. You know, um, addicts talk about that completely hit, hitting rock bottom before they completely give up their drug and Maybe I haven't totally hit it yet. It's with food. It's pretty insidious though. Sugar, food, carbs that it, it really comes so slowly. The pain creeps in and you, you kind of just adjust to it and it becomes just kind of part of your life. And you're just, Oh, I just, I just have a bum knee or, oh, I just, uh, I just am tired a lot. You know, I'm just, uh, just, just exhausted. I have fatigue, whatever it is that we just become accustomed to. Um, and so I have to admit this, these past couple months, uh, struggling to stay on carnivore and basically doing the ketovore, I, I have lost 12 pounds and I just realized the other day how much better I actually felt. And it kind of took me going through those, those, this past week of like, kind of like really bad eating. I mean, I wouldn't say really bad, but well, any sugar is really bad. So. So those like f kind of four days in a row of consuming even a small amount of sugar, which like adds up. So like it's huge because even small things like have enormous amounts of sugar, these carby sugary treats. Anyway, um, my point being is that the pain that I was, I was desperately trying to alleviate, alleviate and kind of impatient to alleviate alleviate um in august and i was like oh the pain still hurt. It was for like two three weeks the pain was still there and then i just kind of stopped thinking about it and I, like it it came back this week obviously which you know who's, who's surprised about that no one um so it coming back in kind of full force is when i wake up and get out of bed i'm hobbling to the bathroom because my knee is inflamed um, with so much weight on it and realizing, you know what? I haven't done that for at least a month. I haven't been hobbling to the bathroom for at least a month. I've been walking like a normal person getting up in the middle of the night. Um, or whenever I, you know, wake up in the morning, uh, it's, it's not like instant pain. So it, it took it coming back for me to even realize, oh yeah. Uh, I kind of had gotten rid of that and, but this is what the carbs do. It brings it back and, and me feeling tired at work, almost wanting to fall asleep while I'm on my planning period, trying to do work, but like nodding off, like, what's that from? That was because I'm, because of those dipping my toe back into the standard American diet and um, 
helping me in, you know, on a bright side, helping me realize how far I actually had come, even though it was only 12 pounds. And I was like, oh, this is not going fast enough. I, I was feeling better. I lost 12 pounds and I was feeling a lot better. I did have a lot more energy. I've been having a really good school year. My mind was up too. My hopefulness was up in this past couple of days. I've been feeling overwhelmed, anxiety, um, feeling like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm not going to make it to this year. I put so much on my plate. I'm not going to make it. Um, I wasn't feeling that until these last couple of days. And I was feeling that, wow, I'm having a really good year so far. This is like, everything's coming together. Um, probably because my mind was coming together. So like everything else comes together. I'm a significantly better teacher when I am uh, not in pain and I have more energy. I mean, I, I guess that we're significantly better at anything we do. If we're not in constant pain, if we're not um, in constant exhaustion or anxiety. Um, so I'm realizing the benefits for sure of following the carnivore way of eating. And I'm still, still struggling that how am I going to make this work in my life? Um, my current plan is to do the best I can this weekend and Monday, I'm going to start BBBE, just, you know, beef, butter, bacon, eggs. Um, to just try to focus on those four foods so that I can um, try to get myself back on track, uh, do what I can with those. I, you know, the sardine fast, just a little, like, just not, just a, I mean, if I loved sardines, they're okay. If I loved them, maybe I could do it. I just don't know that I, I can do that um, with, yeah, I just don't, I just don't know that I can do that I, again. I mean, maybe I can. It was just like, like I, I've done water fast before and I, I almost would prefer that. <laughs> almost prefer a water fast. Um, the problem with fasting for me is when I, if I fast all day, um, when I do start to eat again, um, because like fasting for a certain amount of time will basically shut my digestive system down, which is fine for when I'm fasting. Um, and then the moment I eat something again, it will basically kick back on and clean me out in the form of TMI coming in the form of diarrhea. And so basically I will be up all night. There's like not a good time to schedule that when you're a teacher or when I'm like, I, I can't, you know, if, if I started eating in the morning, I'd be up all night, diarrhea, or I mean, I, I would be all, sorry, if I started eating in the morning, I would be like, I can't, I can't just leave my classroom and go to the bathroom whenever, whenever the sudden urge comes on, <laughs> I, you know, and then if, if I start eating in the evening, when I get home from school, then I'm up all night doing the poops, um, and getting no sleep. Um, so yeah, like I, I, that's, that's kind of been my struggle with fasting. Like I actually, I actually like fasting. I like the, the fasting, you know, I was doing like 18, what is that? 18, six. And it's super helpful, it's super helpful for weight loss, super helpful for my body. I actually feel really good when I do it. But the digestive problem, I don't know how to, I don't know how to,
structure that planet? Like where do where do I put that part of the day that that I start eating and and going to the bathroom? Anyway, like I said, TMI. Um, so there's <laughs> different things on my mind. What can I do? How can I make this work in my lifestyle? I I'm just still struggling to figure that out. Still struggling to figure it out. But I, di I didn't want to leave this part of my journey undocumented. I didn't want to, because um, I'm definitely in, in a dip, definitely in a dip. But I do not want to give up. There's not really, you know, there's not another option. I mean, like I'm kind of at the point where it's going to be basically keto occasionally or for like more than half the time um trying to have alternatives to the things in my face that are definitely bad for me uh definitely poor choices um and, you know, just struggling with the two schools of thought, like, do I go completely off sweeteners? And I know that if I did that, which is completely off, I'd probably not have those cravings. I would not crave those things. But the cultural piece is not just a physical craving because it's, it's like, literally a, a bonded emotional connection to people. And... That is harder. That is the harder part to give up. Could I make those things in some alternative way without sugar? Well, sure, for me, and I, I would, that would be fine. But no one else, like, no one else is gonna enjoy that with me. Probably, um, you know, my family just being like, "This doesn't taste sweet." Well, yeah, no, it doesn't taste sweet. Anyway, um, as I said, this is where I'm at. Um, I don't know if I need to make a definitive decision about something and just put my mind to it, be determined to stick to it. Um, probably. Or if I can be gracious with myself and take it day by day, do the next thing, make a good choice. I'm very much trying to stay away from language that belittles myself. It can be very harsh with myself. Um, say those mean things to myself, but you know, that hasn't worked. That has not, that has not inspired me to continue something, uh, calling myself names or, um, berating myself for not being stronger or, better at something, better at following this way of life. It's hard because I'm pretty successful in, in other things that I try to do. But this is not one of those things that I have yet been able to be successful at. Anyway, I, as I said, trying to be kind to myself or gracious, I should say. Um and hoping for the best moving forward um, to find a strategy that works with my life. So thank you for listening. And um, I wish you luck and joy and health on your journey, whatever it may be.